بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محب اللہ وزیر اینڈ دا ٹاپک از دا میسٹائڈ اینٹرم اینڈ میسٹائڈ ایئر سیلز میسٹائڈ اینٹرم اینڈ ایئر سیلز اوکے دس از بینگ ریلیٹڈ ٹو دا میڈل ایئر اینڈ ناؤ لوک Look to understand this and then posterior canal fossa and this you can see the petrous part of the temporal bone which contains the middle ear and internal ear and posterior to this overhead this you can see this is the mastoid process or mastoid part of the temporal bone. This is the petrous part of the temporal bone. The mastoid is over here related very closely over here to this petrous part of temporal bone. At the outer surface of the mastoid process anterior to that you can see this internal acoustic meatus. Posterior to this margin of external acoustic meatus and this supramiatal crust over here on the lateral surface of the mastoid process this triangular area bounded by this posterior superior margin of the external acoustic meatus and this supramiatal crust this is called a supramiatal triangle or mac evans triangle supramiatal triangles are also called as mac evans triangle supramiatal or mac evans triangle deep to this mac evans triangle if you you know if you remove this piece of plate from over here deep to it lies the mastoid antrum a cavity deep to it lies the mastoid antrum which is a cavity present over here in the posterior part of the temporal Uh, posterior part of the petrous part of the temporal bone so in this way note the point that the mastoid antrum is the mastoid antrum is a space make close the mastoid antrum is a space lying just deep to the supramiatal triangle lying in the petrous part of the temporal bone and note over here please this is the middle ear cavity or middle ear and then this you can see this is the mastoid process containing the mastoid air cells and above that in the petrous part of the temporal bone this space look this space is the mastoid antrum and this mastoid antrum is being connected to this epitempanic creases part of the middle ear because the middle ear consists of two parts this middle ear cavity proper and this upper part which is called as epitempanic creases this epitempanic creases is being connected by this canal to this mastoid antrum which is called as auditus to the mastoid antrum and then below that the mastoid process is being pneumatic pneumatic bone having air containing spaces which are also called as mastoid air cells and this mastoid air cells which are present in the mastoid process over here air containing spaces they are being separated from the posterior canal fossa and the segment sinus by a very thin plate of bone this you can see this is the segment sinus and this is posterior canal fossa and its mastoid air cells are separated from this posterior canal fossa and the segment sinus by thin by this thin plate of bone 
That's why mastoiditis or infection in the mastoid air cells can lead through this thin plate of bone into the middle cranial fossa and it can result in the, in the, in the brain abscess. That's why please the point that a patient presenting with chronic discharging otitis media and then complaining of severe headache then you must suspect that the mastoid air cell has been ruptured into the posterior fossa being resulted into the brain abscess one of the differential diagnosis okay and then present in the middle ear cavity present in the middle ear cavity is three bones present in the middle ear cavity there are three bones look again the tympanic this is the external ear this is the middle ear make it very close and then this is the lateral wall of the middle ear the lateral wall of the internal ear and the medial wall of the middle ear and this is the internal ear inside the middle ear you can see three bones milius incus and stapes these three small bones which are called as ossicles of the middle ear ossicles and these are these are the bones which ossifies first of all in the body and secondly one of the bone is in contact with the tympanic membrane membrane and the other bone is connected through the oval window with the internal ear in this way these three ossicles malleus sinus and tapis they make a chain which transmit the vibrations of the sound waves produced at the tympanic membrane through this channel and through this end of the stapes bone to the internal ears now these three bones are ossicles they are the milius the incus and stapes bone look this is the milius bone which is having the head and then the neck and then the anterior process and then the lateral process and then handle of malleus with the head with the head is over here is a synovial joint being made by the incus over from over here through synovial joints while the handle of malleus it is being in contact look over here it is in contact in adherent with the tympanic membrane then you look at the incus which is having the body and the short limb and the long limb present to the body over here is the articular facet which articulate with the head of the malleus to form synovial joint with one another this articulates and then you look the third bone which is which is the stapes and you can see the stapes is having this small head and then this two processes anterior posterior limb and then this which is called as base of the stapes are also called as foot piece of the stapes and this foot piece of the stapes it articulate over here you can see over here this foot piece of the stapes it passes through the oval window to come into contact with the internal ear these are the three ossicles of the middle ear and attached with this ossicles are muscles stapedius and tensorapenai muscle these muscles actually then regulate moderate the movements of the ossicles in this way the vibration transmitted to the middle ear whether to reduce this vibration or whether to increase is also being done by these muscles of the middle ear this is about the 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 at uh, the end and from mustard and from and the ossicles of the middle ear i hope you understand thank you very much